2018 in New Haven in the month of August, seeing bodies drop on the green, looking out to buy marijuana and getting something else that was unregulated, something else that isn't natural marijuana. What we're not doing here is telling people to use marijuana, but what we are saying is that we need to control what people are setting out to get. We need to control uh, how people seek out what they're trying to look for instead of getting uh, what they did not bargain for. We cannot regulate what is illegal, but what is legal we can regulate. We've known that forbidding substances does not create or does not help, but instead creates negative issues and problems across racial divides. Our Latinx community, our black and brown communities are suffering much more, four to seven times more likely to get arrested for just possessing marijuana according to the ACLU in 2010. So forbidding a substance doesn't work. You can ask any of these clergy about the story of the Garden of Eden. But allowing people to make educated choices and allowing people to uh, sh be shown mercy and dignity is the way to go. Thank you, Reverend Perez and Dr. Stallworth. We have about seven other speakers, but we're only going to have two more with the weather getting bad now. The snow is coming. We're going to ask that the Reverend Stephen Camp of the Faith Congregational Church of Hartford that he will come. And the Reverend Alexander Sharp will follow him with closing remarks. Reverend Sharp has worked nationally on this problem and this issue to get it moved along in various states and regulate and legislatures with great success. So without further ado, we have Reverend Camp coming at this time from Hartford, Connecticut. It hardly ever starts snowing when I speak. <laughs> I, I just stand before you to say that I'm tired of our young black and brown children, young men and women, having their lives disrupted when we can regulate cannabis, when we can make it available so that it doesn't penalize their lives. I just don't see in the scripture where this prohibition makes any sense. I just believe that the Jolly Green Giant and the Pillsbury Doughboy should not have the last word. That it should be the people understanding that they have to be responsible. And so we need to help people to be responsible but prohibition is not the way. And so I applaud this effort and support it. And it is my hope that this state will move into the new century and support a new way. Thank you. Good morning. I'm the Reverend Alexander Sharp. I'm executive director of Clergy for a New Drug Policy. We're a national organization, and we mobilize clergy nationally to end the war on drugs and seek a health, not punishment, response to drug use. We've heard a lot about regulation this morning, and I'd like to just say one small thing that's so obvious we overlook it. You know, critics uh, of what we're trying to do here today say, you know, the marijuana, the cannabis today isn't what our grandparents uh, used. It isn't what our parents used. It's so much stronger today. Well, you know, if that's true, what we ought to do is regulate so that we can control and people know what they're getting. Now, I've been uh, working around the country, but I can report from Illinois, which is my home state, that uh, we became the 11th state, and we fervently hope uh, that Connecticut will be the 12th uh, to uh, legalize cannabis for adult use. What we've done and what you have the opportunity to do here, what we've done in Illinois, is build social justice and social equity into the program. I know you have parts of the bill that are calling for that, 
Uh, we have done that in Illinois. I can tell you that it's possible. It will work. We've set aside 20%, 25% of the revenues uh, from uh, cannabis sales to be spent in communities that were ravaged by the war on drugs. We are creating opportunities for uh, minority businesses to get into the cannabis industry. And one very important thing that I'm seeing happen already is that our community colleges are uh, now offering courses in cultivation training and growing. It's providing opportunities for kids that were, or training opportunities for kids that very recently were in back alleys selling uh, unregulated marijuana to people uh, who certainly don't need it. So I urge you to follow the lead of 11 other states that have done this. Godspeed, we wish you well. Again, thank you so very much for coming today. As stated earlier, our coalition represents more than 100 congregations across the Nutmeg State. And we're hopeful and prayerful that by May 2020, legislation will be passed in the wisdom of our state legislature to regulate this opportunity that brings freedom and brings hope to various communities. And one last thing, Reverend Sharp mentioned about the social equity pieces. We have to be cognizant of the fact that and Reverend Perez mentioned it as well, many people are incarcerated today on charges that really are minimal, minimal charges that perhaps persons should be out on street, on the street, on different kinds of programs and services, getting treatment, getting help, and trying to live a productive life as opposed to being incarcerated in our State Department of Corrections and having to work diligently there for three dollars a day where they could come out and perhaps make thirty dollars an hour doing something constructive. So we're hopeful that we will not be stuck like in the 20s with prohibition. States around us, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and New Jersey is on the, on the ballot for, 20, for 2020. Uh, New York has taken action to do the same. And we're hopeful that Connecticut will continue to rise up with its might, with its strength, and be in the vanguard of making this a justice situation and appropriate for all people. Thank you again for coming today. Have a great afternoon and a great day. You want to take some questions, sir? I will. Um, can you describe uh, the apparent rift between uh, the clergy who opposed the bill and arguably killed it last year to the moment we're in right now? Well, the clergy that I, I'm aware of with who uh, worked in opposition to it last year, I've had some conversations with some of those clergy persons who've taken, one, a stand of neutrality, two, a stand of uh, being, pop, being pro uh, the regulation, but I cannot speak for all of those persons. I can only speak for the one or so who have joined with us to say, let's get rid of the, the issue and make cannabis legal. Uh, okay, but I'm interested in what you think about the rift that is obviously going to exist this year again, sir. Well, I would only tell you that rifts happen everywhere. Uh, and uh, we, are, we are more concerned about regulating cannabis than the rift that might exist, and hopefully those persons who are not with us will indeed see the light and come with us. They may say the same thing about us. <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you again. <laughs>